Good day everyone. Welcome to another biology lesson. Uh, this is your presenter, Mr. Mleng. So we are looking at uh, lesson 2 under the topic healthy, the subtopic diseases. Lesson objective, describe various types of diseases. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to describe various types of uh, diseases. Okay, so let us now look at uh, various types of uh, diseases. So if you remember, in our previous lesson, we did look at uh, two groups of, uh, main groups of diseases, where we said we've got uh, infectious and non-infectious diseases. Apart from that, we did look at examples of uh, such uh, types of diseases, infectious and infectious. Then we also looked at uh, the types of diseases, where we said we have uh, deficient diseases, uh, genetic diseases, social diseases, and so on and so forth. So in this lesson, our main focus is on deficiency diseases. So what are deficient diseases? Deficient diseases are non-infectious diseases caused by starvation or obesity. Or we can say deficient diseases are non-infectious diseases and are caused by not eating a balanced diet or by overeating. So these are uh, type of diseases. They can be transferred from one person to another person. So let us now look at the examples of deficient diseases. We have uh, kwashoka, marasmus, goiter, scurvy, rickets, anemia, obesity, and so on and so forth. These are the examples of deficiency diseases. Uh, let us now start with kwashoka. So kwashoka is a deficient disease which is a severe type of protein energy deficiency in young children, okay? So, uh, kwashoka mainly is caused by lack of what? Proteins in the, in the diet. So, we are going to experience this deficiency disease called D, kwashoka. We now move on to the signs and symptoms. Stunted growth, edema in the form of a protein stomach, low energy, poor mental development, low resistance to infections, excessive sleeping or crying, or always hungry. So people who tend to have this deficient disease, they experience difficulties in terms of growth, okay? So even their stomach, it's broted, okay? They have this um, condition called edema, okay? Where their stomachs looks to be broted. You can refer to the picture. Apart from that, they also have low energy, and in terms of their mental uh, abilities, they are affected as well because of the same condition. They also experience low resistance to infections, meaning that they can't fight all the infections that are affecting them, okay? They have got that low resistance. Apart from that, they also experience excessive sleeping, too much sleeping, okay, or crying a lot. And such people tend to be always hungry, okay? So let us now look at the prevention of kwashoka. How can we prevent this deficiency disease? So the prevention of kwashoka can be looked at providing a, for providing a diet that is rich in proteins and carbohydrate with milk, meat, eggs, and starch. That is how we can prevent this uh, deficient disease. We now come to marasmus. So marasmus is a severe protein and energy malnutrition. The signs and symptoms loose folds of skin on lips and buttocks due to loss of fat and muscle tissues. So people who suffer from this deficient disease called marasmus, they tend to have loose folds of the skin on the lips and the buttocks. And this comes as a result of what? Loss of fats and muscle tissues in the body. Apart from that, such people tend to have retarded growth and mental development. They also have no resistance to diseases and common infections. They also have no energy. They also cry a lot and they are always hungry. So you can see that um, some of the signs and symptoms of marasmus and that of kwashoka are quite similar. So this also means that even in terms of prevention, to be the same, the same. 
So prevention of marasmus, a protein and carbohydrate rich diet with milk, meat, eggs and starch. So that is how we can prevent this deficient disease called the marasmus. We have now come to goiter. So goiter is a condition where the thyroid gland cannot secrete hormones. Goiter is caused by lack of iodine in the diet. Signs and symptoms. Enlargement of the gland which causes swelling and breathing problems. Constipation. Intolerance of cold conditions. Also depression. So people suffering from this condition called goiter, they tend to have the enlargement of the, the gland. Okay? And when this gland becomes large, it causes the swelling, it swells. Okay? And they experience difficulties in terms of breathing. Apart from that, they also become intolerant to cold conditions. Okay? They will be feeling uh, that coldness. And they also tend to be depressed most of the most of the time. All right. Let us now look at prevention. So goiter. One of the preventions uh, includes iodine in the diet in form of seafood and iodized salt. So no wonder it's more advised that whenever you are eating food, there is iodized water sort in the food that you are eating so fair to that you are going to experience this what this condition got called goiter apart from that another prevention is where you find that if there are more severe cases of this condition goiter it can be uh, treated with what therapy okay there can be hormone replacement that can be treated with therapy so these are the preventions of goiter now come to another deficiency disease which is called scurvy. So scurvy is a deficiency disease caused by a severe lack of vitamin C. So scurvy is a severe deficiency disease caused by lack of what? Vitamin C. So if you are having your diet and there is no vitamin C, you are going to experience this uh, disease called scurvy. So what are the signs and symptoms? So you find that this disease called scurvy is going to be causing the gums to be bleeding. Apart from gum bleeding, it will also enable uh, the person to experience swollen gums. Their gums will be swollen, okay? Such people also will be fe feeling what? Tired. So these are the signs and symptoms of scurvy. Bleeding gums and bruising under the skin, swollen gums and tiredness let us now look at prevention so a diet rich in fresh fruit and vegetables especially citrus fruit like oranges this is just the prevention that can be taken in order to prevent this deficiency what disease ensure that your diet is rich in fresh fruits and vegetables such as oranges very important okay we now come to rickets. So rickets is a deformation of the bones. Okay. So this condition is caused by lack of vitamin D in the diet. So you can see that um, the vitamins are very important in the diet. Okay. So calcium cannot be used in the bone growth without the presence of what? Vitamin D. Okay. We know that calcium plays a major role in the strengthening of what? Of the bones. So it cannot be used alone in bone growth without the presence of what? Vitamin E, vitamin D. So these two vitamins are intertwined, okay? Let us look at the signs and symptoms of rickets. So bones of skeleton are poorly formed, as you can see on, my, um, on the diagram, which is on the left-hand side. Apart from that, bored uh, legs that make walking and normal movement very difficult. So people suffering from um, rickets, they find it very difficult to experience Normal movement, okay? It becomes very difficult for them. Let us now look at the prevention. Vitamin D, diet, that includes milk, cheese, fish oil, eggs, liver, and fish. So, a vitamin D rich diet should be taken, okay, by people 
who are suffering from this condition also just to prevent it so that you cannot experience it apart from that exposure to the sun okay as vitamin d is made by by the skin that's why it's important that you have that exposure to the sun so that you you make vitamin what vitamin d through the skin we now come to another deficient disease which is anemia so anemia is a condition where there is shortage of red blood cells or hemoglobin in the blood so this disease is caused by shortage of iron in the diet so you have to ensure that you eat a lot of food that is rich in iron so iron is important to form hemoglobin in the red blood cells that is why it's important to eat food rich in iron because iron is used for the formation of uh, hemoglobin in the red blood cells we now look at the signs and symptoms of anemia number one there is low iron count in the blood low resistance to diseases low energy levels tires very easily meaning that people who are suffering from anemia they tend to be tired very easily looks pale is easily out of breath meaning that people suffering from this condition called anemia they tend to have difficulties when it comes to to breathing i hope we are moving together we now look at the prevention of anemia okay so the way we can prevent this um, deficient disease called anemia is to have an iron rich diet that includes red meat eggs and green vegetables like spinach apart from that also iron supplements so there are some iron supplements that are sold in different uh, places these can be acquired by uh, people suffering from this condition so that they prevent anemia okay so we move on to another condition called obesity so obesity is a common form of malnutrition where too much fats is stored under the skin so this um, deficient disease called obesity it is caused by imbalanced diet with excessive fats and carbohydrates combined with a lack of exercise so when you take in too much um, fats and too much carbohydrates okay you are going to experience this condition called obesity okay so in other words we are looking at where a person is eating what too much okay so once you eat a lot of fats these fats are going to be stored under under the skin okay and the person will tend to have a large body body size let us now look at the signs and symptoms of obesity number one excessive weight high blood pressure tiredness difficulties with breathing joints are painful and swollen making movements difficult so people suffering from this condition called obesity they have excessive weight even their blood pressure uh, is very high they also tend to be very tired and they face difficulties when it comes to what to breathing apart from that even their joints they feel their joints to be more painful and they are swollen at times and this makes it the movement very difficult for such for such people so let us now look at how we can prevent obesity so one of the preventions of obesity is that a balanced diet low in energy foods and rich in fresh fruit and vegetables should be taken in okay so once you take in a diet that is very low in energy foods also it should be rich in what fresh fruits and vegetables you can prevent obesity apart from that a gradually introduced exercise program remember i did mention that if you are lacking exercise it can also contribute to obesity so you have to make sure that you make up a program that you involve what the exercise then this condition obesity can be prevented so let us look at the task now give one word or term for each of the following descriptions meaning that these questions you have to provide one one word okay question one 
diseases that are non-infectious and caused by not eating a balanced diet or by overeating. So you provide one word that would describe this. Okay? Number two, a disease caused by lack of iodine in the diet. So what is the name of the disease that is caused by lack of a diet, lack of iodine, sorry, in the diet? Number three, a disease in children caused by lack of proteins in the diet over a long period of time so what weight can we put there on number three number four a disease caused by starvation so what is the more of the disease that is caused by starvation not eating number five the mineral that lacks in the diet of people that suffers from anemia so what is the name of the mineral uh, that lacks in the diet of people that suffers from anemia. So we've come now to the end of our lesson. Thank you so much everyone for having time to watch this lesson. Bye bye.